Okay, let's kick off again. I think we've got everybody who's going to be in the room. Uh, so have we still got everybody? Anybody falling asleep? It's late in the day. No. Okay. They, they will now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What am I saying? <laughs> okay, I'd really like to introduce uh, Julien, who's uh, AWS's French tech ambassador, uh, evangelist. Um, Something like that. And I'll let him give a proper introduction to himself. All right. So kick it away. Thank you. Hey. Well, thank you, everybody. I want to thank you 10 times because all of you guys are my excuse for coming to New Zealand. OK, so thank you. <laughs> now, actually, I have a job to do as well. Uh, so my name is Julian. Uh, I, I'm a tech evangelist for AWS, which uh, and I, I, sometimes I do work in the Paris office on the other side of the globe. But as it turns out, I spend most of my time traveling um, all across Europe and beyond to meet technical communities uh, like you guys uh, and, uh, and to speak at conferences, meetups, uh, our own events, etc., etc. So I've been with AWS for about a year and a half, uh, traveling you know, way too many miles, but that's, that's okay. Uh, that's, that's my job. And, um, and so today, uh, I'm going to talk about um, building serverless apps with Node.js. So before we start, I want to run a, a few questions here. Uh, so who has never used AWS before in any capacity? Never. Raise your hand. That's OK. I'm, I'm not going to yell at you. <laughs> Only four people. No, come on. That's not important. OK. Really? Everybody else has used AWS at least once. Wow. OK, so I'm, I'm in definitely on the right side of the planet. OK. <laughs> Maybe I should move here. Uh, on second thought, I'm, I don't have a job anymore because you guys know everything. Uh, who has, uh, so who's a developer? Oh, yes. OK. Who is a sysadmin, sysops, devops, that DBA? Yeah? All right, a couple of DBAs. All right. That's OK. I've been there. OK. Um, and you guys all write code in Node.js, right? That's it? That's the, that's the deal. So I'll try not to say Python or, or, or Java. Or, and I don't want to piss you off. OK. <laughs> so that's my email address. If you, uh, if you have questions uh, after the talk, feel free to shoot me an email. Just for your, your information, I'm in town until uh, uh, Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. So, uh, so if, you know, if you guys have questions on AWS, if you want to go and have beers or uh, any kind of uh, uh, alcohol, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm up for that. I left my brain on the plane, so I don't really risk anything. OK, and that's my Twitter account. OK, uh, if you have questions, please raise your hand, interrupt me. OK, I want to make this interactive. Of course, I've got stuff to show you, but you know, I, I also want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. So just before we go into the subject um, and try to understand what, what that serverless thing is all about, um, maybe we should look quickly at how we've been doing things for the last 60 years or something. So I guess most of you, many of you here, probably still have some servers somewhere you know, running in the basement or in the, in the garage or wherever. And that's fine. I've, I've done that for over 10 years before joining AWS. I've been a CTO for a number of startups in Paris. And you know, I, I did spend a lot of money on servers and, and routers and, and whatnot. Um, the thing is, I, they're fun to play with. But when you need, by, between the time you actually need them and the time you can actually use them, we all know it takes weeks and sometimes months right, to, to buy them and deploy them. And so that can be pretty frustrating and not very agile. And so over the years, people have come up with a, a better way of doing things in, in the form of you know, virtualization and virtual machines and cloud computing, which has been around, believe it or not, for 10 years now. AWS was started in 2006. And so using EC2, for example, on AWS, you can start virtual machines uh, in minutes. So that's way better than the, the previous model, but as you may know, uh, virtual machines are usually paid by the hour, right? 
whether you do something useful with them or not. And that's slightly frustrating, right? Creating virtual machines that do nothing, and yet they still cost money. And we moved on, and uh, containers came around, and uh, you know, Docker and everything else. And that's, that's a nice solution as well. Uh, you can provision your apps in seconds if you have you know, Docker machines ready to, to support them. Um, so it, it's a better model. But still, you know, you're running servers, okay? You're running servers, and you have to manage them, and you have to take care of them, love them, hate them, you know, it all depends, usually both. And so that gentleman, uh, I'm not sure he's ever been to New Zealand, but maybe he has, actually. Yeah, I think he, he did, yeah? So uh, Werner Fogels is the CTO of uh, Amazon.com. He looks pretty tiny in that picture, but he's actually a fairly... Fairly big guy, um, and pretty fun guy too. And um, at our tech conference two years ago, uh, he came up with that sentence, which I'm very happy I, I don't have to translate it this time because you, all, you guys all speak English. But to a French audience, this makes really no sense at all. And I spent 10 minutes explaining what it is because you know we don't speak all the languages. Um, that's you know because French, you know everybody speaks French as we know. Uh, so no server is easier to manage than no server. And so that means let's make our life simple, simpler. Let's get rid of servers altogether. And let's just write code and deploy code. And well, that's, the, that's my talk today. Let's see how we can do that. And this was linked to the release of a, of a new service called Lambda. So let me ask you, who has heard of Lambda? Oh, you guys are amazing. Come on. Is this the AWS office in the room, or are you guys playing a joke on me or something? <laughs> this is unbelievable. All right. OK. So I'm moving. That's it. Um, it was launched in 2014. And uh, so you already know that you can deploy what we call pure functions, stateless functions, in Node.js and a bunch of other languages that you really don't care about. Um, and the good thing is you can just deploy code. And that's what we'll do. And no infrastructure drama, no infrastructure at all, actually. Uh, scalability, high availability are built in. We solve that problem for you. It's integrated with other services. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty nice service. And like everything else, it's pay as you go. So you pay by execution time. You have 100 millisecond slots. And that's what you pay. Okay? And compare that to, let's say, EC2 instances where you pay by the hour whether you use the instance or not. Okay, so one of the nice benefits of Lambda is how economical it is, because you pay for functions only when you call them, right? So your traffic and your costs are strictly linked, which is more difficult to achieve with, uh, I would say, uh, cloud architectures. So what can you do with Lambda? So you can gr do what we call grow connective tissue in your infrastructure. Um, Lambda is well integrated with many services. So you can do stuff like, hey, when someone drops a picture in, a, in an S3 bucket, please call a Lambda function that grabs this picture, uh, compresses it, uh, extracts the metadata, and writes that metadata to DynamoDB, for example, and do that automatically versus writing a, a full-fledged application that would do that. Just insert a tiny piece of code with an event that triggers it to produce some results. Um, you, can buy, you can build even driven applications, of course, uh, your own apps. And a lot of people are building APIs right? in conjunction with uh, another service called the API Gateway. And we're going to look at that, how to build APIs in minutes. Okay? So in a nutshell, serverless is a combination of Lambda for computing right? And manage services for backends like, you know, S3, DynamoDB, Kinesis, or maybe the API gateway to act as a, as a front-end layer for Lambda functions. So that's what serverless means. So obviously, obviously there are some servers, <laughs> right? This is not running on thin air. Uh, but, you know, we have those servers somewhere, and they do what they have to do, and, uh, and you never have to worry about it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me give you an example here. Uh, 
you may have heard of those guys, the cloud guru. Who, who has heard of those guys? Uh, they're a UK company. Okay, so they haven't reached into uh, New Zealand yet. Uh, actually, they're uh, an excellent company. They provide uh, online training on, on AWS and other topics like Docker and so on. Uh, and their platform is fully serverless. So these guys are running on AWS, but they, they don't have a single EC2 instance in their architecture. Everything is serverless, either uh, using Lambda, API Gateway, et cetera, or using external SaaS providers. And the cool thing about this is uh, their fixed costs for infrastructure are super low, right? Because when, they're, when they have no traffic, when they're not serving course, courses and videos, they don't pay for much. And so that enables them to have very competitive and inexpensive prices for their training. Uh, and, uh, and my training colleagues absolutely hate it when I talk about Cloud Guru. But I, as a matter of fact, you know, they, they're, they're super successful. So if you're looking for good trainings, by the way, just check them out. And they are really, really uh, efficient at, uh, at delivering the courses and at building their platform. So how would you go about developing a, a serverless app? So you would write and deploy a Lambda function. Probably you would uh, put an API in front of it, right? Everything is an API these days. Everything is a service. You would connect both. And of course, you would call that API, and you would test and debug and repeat until the whole damn thing works, right? I spent a lot of time on that item number five. Okay, so it's a typical development uh, process. Um, so let's see how we do that, okay? Um, so all the code samples that I'm showing you are uh, on, on GitHub, and I will obviously post my slides on Twitter, so you, you guys will get everything. Um, so how do, you, how do you write code for serverless apps? Well, as it turns out, we have a number of, op of uh, open source frameworks that are pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I'm gonna talk about those. Um, the first one is the serverless framework. Who has heard of that, that one? Okay, a few people. It used to be called JAWS, uh, which stands for AWS, just AWS without servers. And that was a brilliant name, but probably they got a phone call for, from a lawyer somewhere, and they changed the name. Plus, they also support uh, all the clouds and AWS now, so they had to rebrand to that super confusing name, the serverless framework, but that's it. So it was launched at reInvent some time ago. They support Node.js, uh, plus all the languages that you don't care about. Uh, and, and the basic idea here is uh, it makes it super easy to, uh, to well, write and, and test locally and deploy functions um, with, a, with a command line interface that's pretty developer friendly, I would say. Much more developer friendly than the AWS command line that I'm not even gonna show you today, <laughs> although it does exist. Um, so you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, write a small, uh, a small configuration file uh, describing your function, describing the event sources for that function. So if there's an API gateway in front of it or if there's something else, etc. And it's gonna create all the infrastructure automatically for you using CloudFormation, right? So who has heard of CloudFormation? Ah, less people, okay, yes. Okay, so very quickly, what is CloudFormation? That's my single slide on CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is infrastructure as code tech. Uh, you describe your infrastructure in a template, so either a JSON or a YAML template, so all the resources in your platform, right? Uh, and you could use that with uh, EC2 instances and databases and, and everything else, but in our case, we could use that only for Lambda functions. So describe that in a, in a document, uh, run that document through CloudFormation, and then CloudFormation is automatically going to build everything, okay? So uh, it's, uh, it's one of the pillars of, uh, of AWS. We use it a lot internally for many services. Okay, and uh, in that case, serverless, the serverless framework is gonna, is gonna use it too. We're gonna look at that, okay? So it's time for the proverbial hello world. So that's how you would, uh, that's how you would do uh, the uh, Hello World example, create a new project. Uh, here, we're gonna use the Node.js, AWS Node.js template. We would, of course, write the code, look at the config file, etc. cetera. We then we would deploy it, right? Or maybe before we would invoke it locally, right? We would do some testing. 
uh, invoke it locally, run some unit testing, which is always nice. Uh, and so you could do that locally without deploying to the cloud. Then you would deploy uh, and uh, invoke it remotely if you want it. Uh, and of course, you could remove it. Okay, so let's look at a quick example. Can you read okay in the back? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just yell if that's too small. Okay, so here's a super simple example to get things going. So that's the Node.js function, so it is hello world, right? Nothing, nothing fancy here. And this is what I would provide in my config file, okay? So not much, right? Just mention that I want to deploy in the, in the Sydney region here, and I've got a single function which, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, called hello, actually. Okay, that's it, that's all I have to do, right? So write my function, provide that very basic file, and I could test it, right? So I could invoke it locally, Oops. Okay, so that's all local, right? So could you could run, you could integrate that with your with your CI and do uh, uh, and do all your uh, unit testing there. But of course, what you want to do at some point is to do a deploy, and so it's going to package everything, the code and everything, and it's going to create the CloudFormation template and it's going to run it through CloudFormation. So if I'm looking here at the CloudFormation console, I can see my, uh, my stack um, being, uh, hmm, that's a little weird. I can see my stack being created. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, okay so it's gonna create an S3, an S3 bucket to deploy the code, it's going to create uh, the Lambda function itself, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and that should only take a minute. Okay, so do I see my function here already? Hmm. Not, not quite yet, okay. Okay, so as you can see, it's you know, one single, one line of uh, one command line uh, just to get that thing deployed. And you don't need to understand all that cloud formation stuff. I'm showing it to you because you guys are clearly advanced users, but uh, you, could, you could live your life happily and ignore this thing. Okay, so it should be done pretty soon, right? Hopefully. Yeah, okay, creating all the permissions and everything. Come on. Okay, creating the function now. So I should see my function somewhere in here. Yeah, here it is. Okay. All right, so that's my function. Okay. Okay, so it's ready here. But this is really a boring example because uh, I didn't create an API for it. Okay, it's, uh, it's just a function. So that could be useful in, a, let's say, a DevOps, a DevOps scenario where you just want to run uh, functions linked to other events. But probably, if you want to do you know, more interesting things, uh, and let me deploy that one while I explain it. Um, okay, so that's the same function, but as you can see here, I defined here, I, I have a, a, a section uh, basically saying uh, the event source for this function is uh, the API gateway. So whenever I'm going to call URL blah 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 slash hello, that's going to actually call my function. Okay. So same story. CloudFormation is running. And I should see my API in a few minutes. See, okay, API has been created. So if I looked at, where is it? 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 obviously, you know, but I'm an old timer, so, you know, AWS search engine for services is a new concept to me. Okay. All right, so is it, is it done? Okay, looks like it. So, actually, if I just call that API here, what? can I do that? No. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Yeah, go, 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 go. All right. Okay, that worked. Okay, so the code itself is very basic, but the interesting thing here is how simply and how quickly I can deploy a web service, right? Um, and I don't have to worry about much, okay? In real life, you would worry about authentication and so on, and of course you can do that. But as you can see, in just a couple of CLI calls, you can deploy your web service, make it available to, uh, you know, internally on your platform or like, like here, even publicly on the internet, okay? And again, that's all you have to do, right? So it's pretty cool. Right. You can use a lot of other uh, event sources for, uh, for with the serverless framework. Uh, you can use, uh, you know, I showed you just, you know, the API gateway, but of course you can do a whole lot more. Okay, so that's my second example here, basically just adding uh, an event source and uh, and redeploying and uh, and invoking it. Okay. Uh, there's um, there's another framework um, called Gordon. Are you guys familiar with Gordon? Yeah? No? Haha, <laughs> got you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you can't know them all. Okay, uh, so, um, so Gordon is another one, and it's, it's on GitHub as well. Uh, it's, I would say it's the same, but different, right? Uh, you know how open source projects are. Uh, for every single thing, you have 10 different projects trying to solve the same problem. Um, Gordon does support uh, some more languages, uh, some, some of the more exotic uh, JVM languages. So that could be interesting to uh, some of you guys. It does, I know you don't want to hear about other languages, but this one does support Golang if you're interested, which is interesting as well because Golang is not part of the, the official uh, Lambda languages. Okay, so if you have that, if you fancy running Golang in Lambda, you could use Gordon. Um, I would say apart from that, it, it pretty much does the same thing. Uh, it, it supports many event sources. It's going to use CloudFormation. It has a YAML config file. Um, it has a slightly different command line. We're going to run a quick example. But as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, right? So I'm showing, two, I'm showing you two of those because, you know, one, why, could I, why should I pick only one? Even though serverless has been around for a long time, it's been the, uh, you know, the the, the initial uh, serverless project on AWS. There are many others, and, and this one I think is, uh, is pretty interesting. So let's, let's look at an example with Gordon, just for the sake of it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, maybe a quick look at the function first. All right, nothing, nothing worth mentioning. Hello world again. Uh, let's look at the settings. Oops, sorry. Okay, so pretty similar, um, pretty similar YAML file, uh, the region, um, the name of the Lambda function, and then the event sources. Okay, so in this case, I've got an API w which allows me to get and post on uh, on the service. Um, so you can also do the local testing thing. Uh, oh yeah, let me be lazy and just do this. Right, that should work. All right. Okay, so unit testing is unit testing is good. Let's apply it. Again, you know, it's going to package everything build a CloudFormation template, and it's gonna create it here. So here it goes, okay? So let, let, we can just let that guy run for a few minutes, and I'll continue, okay? Uh, 
Um, there are more. <laughs> so I could go on and show you um, uh, at least three more. Uh, there's a really cool one uh, that you know, I should really show you. It's called Apex. Um, uh, it's very, very active. Uh, the maintainer is doing a, a really great job. So Apex is more of the same, right? Although I'm sure the Apex founder would hate me for saying that. Uh, but it, you know, it looks very similar. Uh, the difference is that uh, Apex does not use CloudFormation. It uses another infrastructure as code technology called Terraform. You guys know Terraform, right? Yeah? Yeah, a few people, okay. So Terraform is, uh, is more agnostic. You know, CloudFormation is an AWS service, so you can only deploy AWS resources. Terraform allows you to deploy on other clouds or it allows you to deploy and, and to create resources in GitHub or you know, many, many SaaS providers. Uh, then I would say in the Python world that you don't care about, we have Zappa and we have uh, a, an open source project from AWS which is called Chalice. Uh, it's still in beta, but it's pretty cool. It's a Flask for Lambda. If you guys know Flask in Python, it's exactly the same concepts. So if you do a little Python or if your boss you know, makes you write Python every now and then, sure, you can hate him for it. Uh, although I do love Python. I, you, know, you could look at Zappa or, uh, or Chalice if that's interesting. And Docker Lambda is trying to replicate lo the Lambda environment locally using Docker containers to allow you to do some uh, unit testing locally. Okay. But again, these are, I would say, the dominant ones, but you know, hardly a week goes by without a new project showing up on, a, uh, showing up on a Hacker News or on GitHub. So, oh. yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, sure, just refreshing issues. Okay, so, all right, so this little guy is ready here. Um, And we could just invoke it, right? Uh, so I missed the URL. That's here it is. Oh uh, yeah, we could try post. All right. That worked, okay? So similar tool, but try both, and one of them is gonna feel more natural. That's, you know, it's like when you have your favorite screwdriver or your favorite whatever, you know, you can't explain why that's the one you like best, but that's just, just a fact, okay? And again, Apex is very, very nice too, but you know, I, I didn't wanna show you three. Okay, so that's, the, I would say, the development part, right? Um, and again, yes, you can do all of that stuff with the AWS CLI, right? Uh, of course, you can do that. You know, you could go and uh, try, you know, AWS Lambda create function, blah, 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 okay? But as it turns out, you know, developers don't do that because they mostly hate the AWS command line, which is more, I would say, ops oriented or, or uh, infrastructure oriented, okay? And this is why you know, I strongly advise you to go and try those uh, open source frameworks. So what about deployment? Can we make deployment a little easier? Here I showed you very basic examples, but imagine you have a more complicated application with you know, multiple functions, DynamoDB tables, S3 buckets, et cetera. Uh, is there a way to you know, create and, and of course uh, build and destroy and and manage everything with a single uh, call, basically. And until recently, there was no good answer to that. Yes, you could do that in CloudFormation. You could create all those distinct resources, but you didn't have the concept of a serverless app. So you had to you know, do some, uh, some plumbing in the CloudFormation templates to get everything connected, and that was really unpleasant. So we came up with a SAM the serverless application model, which is an extension to uh, CloudFormation. It's fairly new, so I guess not so many people have heard about it. Um, and, and the idea here is that uh, we're introducing a new concept of a serverless application with new resource types. So at the time, for the time being, we have the functions, we have APIs, and we have simple tables, which are uh, DynamoDB tables. 
And these all go together, and as you can see, the template that we get to write using the, these is really much simpler. And we have some new CloudFormation commands to package and deploy them. Okay. Uh, so I have, do have an example here, but let's jump to a real demo um, and, get, and look at something a little more interesting. So here, basically, so I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a very basic uh, CRUD API to a DynamoDB table, okay? So I have a get function here. I have a put function here. And I think I do have a delete function. Yeah, I do have a delete function here. And basically, these are going to do get and put and delete on items in a DynamoDB table, okay? So three fun functions here, and, and my template, okay? So in the resource part, I'm going to describe that first, the get function, right, with an API in front of it, my put function with an API in front of it, my delete function, right? And as you can see, all of those are referencing a table that is going to be created here as well. There's an IAM policy for, uh, uh, for managing permissions into, uh, into the DynamoDB table. And I'm creating a table here, right? So it doesn't look really complicated, but you know, trust me, if you try to do this with CloudFormation previously, this probably was, I would say, 100 or 200 lines of JSON, right? Or maybe even YAML. <laughs> so it was really more complicated. Now, the fact, you know, this kind of thing, the fact that you can reference, you know, uh, you can reference all that stuff together, you know, it makes it really, really easier. Okay, so it's a fairly short template. Okay, so uh, how do I deploy this thing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to cheat for a second. If you allow me. Ah. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is this. Oh, maybe you don't, guys don't see in the back. Yeah. So here, basically, I'm going to package all that stuff together, um, saying, well, OK, there's the, here's the S3 bucket to use to copy the code of the functions, et cetera. And so that creates the actual template that I'm going to use, right? So as you can see, it, it just defined that S3 bucket in there. I think that's the only thing it does. Everything else looks totally identical, OK? So that's a proper CloudFormation template. And now I can just deploy it. OK, so yep, good to go. OK, and again, compared to uh, what I showed you with the, let's say, serverless or Gordon uh, examples, this is better, right? Because this is really a single stack with everything uh, together. So you can, you have atomicity on the deployment, on the building and the destruction of your app, which is you know, more complicated to get uh, you know, in, in the, in the, in which, which was more complicated to get in the, in the old days, okay? So let me look at this here. Okay, so I can see my stack being created here. And, you know, unsurprisingly, it's going to build all that stuff. Okay, and we should see in the API gateway in a second. Uh, we should see the APIs for the for the um, DynamoDB tab. Oh, here it is. So. Okay, some demo. So it's going to create automatically the three APIs for the three functions, and it's going to deploy them. 
and I should see the endpoints pretty soon. And then I can call them. Okay. All right, done. So if I just reload this page here. Uh, no, I should go to the stages, sorry. Okay, so I see my endpoint here for the delete function. I see my endpoint for the get, my endpoint for the put, okay? Again, all that stuff, all that plumbing gets created with those five lines of YAML. And, you know, that's so much better than the previous way of doing things. So do I have a Dynamo t table here as well? Let's just check, and then we can try and write to it. Yep, okay. It should be empty. It is. Okay. So now let's use this. Whoops. Oh, come on. Yep. So we should try, we should start with a put, right? <laughs> So how about item one, value one equal Wellington, value two equal NZ. All right, that worked, okay. Let's do on the second one. So that, that works, okay? So again, you see, you know, it's a, it's a very lightweight way of doing things. Um, of course, this is not production ready, there's no authentication, there's no stuff like that, but you write the code, right? And you guys know how to do that, okay? Better than I do, okay? Write the code. Um, this code gets the table uh, name because it's uh, an environment variable somewhere here, yeah? Okay, so that's passed by the, by the CloudFormation template. And then it's normal code, okay? And then all you do is write your small template, okay? You can do YAML uh, or JSON, but probably YAML, <laughs> I guess, uh, easier to read. And you know it's fairly human readable, if you ask me, and you can deploy all that stuff. Okay, so let's try. Let's try the other ones. Get. Okay, and just for the sake of it, we can try to delete. Hopefully it's gone. It is, okay? And then, you know, if, if you wanna delete that thing or uh, if you, uh, you know, if you wanna, I don't know, deploy the next version or whatever, you could go in the console and you could do uh, delete stack or, you know, since it's a normal CloudFormation stack, you could just go and use my lovely AWS CLI uh, and call something like delete stack and I always forget whether it's stack or stack name, so I'll go with stack name this time. And yeah. And off it goes, okay? So, you know, as little plumbing as possible, if you ask me. Okay, much better than if you guys, if you, some of you guys have been playing with CloudFormation you know, for a while, you know, you, you know it's, it's, it's a super powerful tool uh, once you have the templates ready. <laughs> but there's a learning curve to writing the templates. 
and uh, and especially if you wanted to combine all those resources together, make it make sure it worked properly, and there was a little bit of effort. Okay, uh, now you know using SAM it's much simpler, and you can create and delete and you know and and redeploy this to a different region. You know you get all the cloud formation benefits. All right, I'm almost done. So uh, there, there, there has been, a, you know, tons of stuff going on on Lambda uh, recently. Uh, so here are some good videos uh, from uh, reInvent 2016 that just took place in, in December, with basically the latest Lambda features, as well as uh, some of our uh, related services. I do have five minutes. Okay, so there's a bonus demo. Um, and it's going to take 30 seconds, I, I promise. OK, so we announced, uh, uh, and I need to switch regions. We announced another service called Lambda at Edge. Did anyone hear about that one? No? OK, good. <laughs> so Lambda at Edge, it's still in preview, so I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> Lambda at Edge is the, uh, so when we say Edge at AWS, we mean Edge locations. And we mean uh, uh, points of presence for our, our uh, content delivery network, which is called CloudFront. Okay, I, and I double check. I'm sorry, there, there is no CloudFront location in uh, New Zealand, but uh, I think uh, there's Sydney and Melbourne. I think so. It's not too far. And so basically, you can now run Lambda functions on the edge locations, right? Uh, and why would you do that? Well, you could do uh, HTTP header customization. Right for every incoming or outgoing uh, HTTP request going to your, or coming from your web app, you could manipulate your HTTP headers. You could do A/B testing. You could inject ads. Uh, you could do authentication, traffic filtering, etc. Well, anything that you want to do as soon as possible before that traffic hits your web app. Right? You don't need to bring it to uh, the actual origin to uh, to get things done. And of course, you can do that already, but uh, you know that usually involves writing nginx uh, rules or load balancer rules, or uh, you know black magic uh, request manipulation in your web app. And if you ask me, all those solutions are dangerous and and create bugs usually. So I think it's a better way to separate the actual application code in the web app from the I would say HTTP slash header manipulation that you need to do, okay? And so that's what Lambda at Edge does. So what you do is you write a small Lambda function, uh, you deploy it to the Edge locations, and you write it in Node. That's why I'm mentioning this. Um, so I need to go back to Ireland. Yes, please. And here's an example. So, so it's a fancy website that I wrote. Yeah, come on. And if you look at, yeah, that's about as much HTML as, uh, you know. When I learned HTML, you, most of you were not born and CSS does, did not exist. So. And it was HTML 1.0 anyway. So I'm hitting a, a, a URL called album.jpg. And as it turns out, that file does not exist, right? I could show you my, uh, my, my, the bucket where the, those files are. That's, that file does not exist. So what I'm doing here is I have a small Lambda function um, which is this one, uh, which is distributed to uh, the Clonford locations. And so if the URL is not album.jpg, I'm not doing anything. And if, if, if it is, I'm, you know, I'm just basically throwing a coin and replacing album.jpg by one of those four pictures, right? So, and this runs at the edge, okay? And so obviously when I'm gonna reload, Right, so I'm still hitting, you know, that same URL all the time. But you know, the lambda function, yeah, Judas Priest, come on. Right, I'm changing the picture. So the next step would be set a cookie uh, and build some A/B tests, uh, you know, uh, user groups and blah 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 blah. Okay, so that's just another example of using lambda functions in Node, uh, and you can only do Node, so that's good for you guys. Uh, to do some uh, to do some test. 
Okay, and it's called Lambda at Edge. It's still in preview, but you can join it and you can register. Okay, so tons more stuff going on on Lambda uh, if you want to know more. Okay, I'm done. I want to thank you very, very much. I, I, I did not expect to see that many people uh, really uh, today. So again, thank you for uh, bringing me to New Zealand. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great trip. And I'm really, really uh, keen on answering your questions. Uh, and thanks again. And thank you to, uh, to the conference for having me. Thank you so much.